Welcome everyone to the Symbility self-paced training modules. We've designed our training modules with you the user in mind to take control over your learning experience. You can pause the video at any time to give yourself some hands-on practice. In this module, we're going to learn how to diagram exteriors. Let's get started. So to begin working with an exterior plan, the first thing we need to do is make sure that under diagrams in our Claim Explorer, we have an exterior plan selected. So if I look under here, under diagrams, we can see I've diagrammed some floor plans and I did some roof plans. And here I've got an exterior plan selected. If you don't have an exterior plan under diagrams, you can always come right here to diagrams, right click, and the third option in there says add exterior plan. So once you have an exterior plan underneath diagrams and it's selected, you'll see your canvas. This is where we do all of our diagramming. And then I see the ribbon across the top. And if you've, you've gone through our diagramming floor plans module and the diagramming roof plans module, this setup should look similar, but also a little different because now that we're in an exterior plan, the ribbon is showing you the tools and options that are particular to diagramming an exterior. Now, compared to roofing, there are a lot fewer shapes. Remember in roofing, there were all these different roof shapes to choose from. Here in, in exterior, we only have two shapes. And we're actually gonna look at two different ways to diagram an exterior. We're gonna look at a 2D exterior and a 3D exterior. So um, what else do I see here in the ribbon before I get into that? Uh, you know, we've got our rotate options. These are grayed out because they'll only be available if we're doing a 3D exterior. Your zoom options, these function just as they did if you looked at diagramming floor plans and roof plans, they function the same way. But here, let me start with these two shapes. So I'm gonna start with just uh, that rectangle, for example. So I could select it, I come into the canvas, and I click. It's just gonna drop that, that standard shape in there, 10 by 10. Uh, all the different ways to adjust dimensions that we saw in diagramming floor plans and roof plans carry over here as well, so I could use those sizing handles or I could click on something and I could uh, type in a dimension or I could come in here and I could use the arrows to, to set those dimensions as well. So, you know, for example, if there's damage to just one side of a house, well, that could be your exterior plan, simple as that. You're not limited to this only representing the side of a house. This could represent any kind of flat surface that you want to apply an item to. So for example, it could be a driveway or a patio or a fence. Again, it can represent any kind of flat surface. But here in this example, of course, it's representing the exterior of a house. Um, what about this other shape in there? So there's a triangle. So for example, I want to do a gable end, okay? So let me just make a little space in there. I'll select the triangle. And when I come in here, I drop it in. Something to be aware of, notice as I choose any of these points, Okay, as I make something larger or smaller, all of the sides are moving together. They don't move independently of each other, they move together. So if I'm trying to do a gable end, this is what it's gonna look like. That's really steep. Maybe I wanna just lower this one point, but how can I do that? It changes the dimensions on all the other sides at the same time. Well, there's a tool that's going to allow me to do it and it's called vertex mode. When I click on vertex mode, it changes all those square handles into circular handles. And remember, a square handle will perform a different action than a circular handle. The circular handle here will actually manipulate the shape, so it allows me to move this point independently of the others. So I can bring this down to do something like that, okay? Um, so I've got my gable end, now, if I wanted to add an overhang, of course I could use the sides to make something larger or smaller. I'm gonna stick with it looking just as it did before as my gable end. All right, now these two shapes are seen as two different shapes, really they're independent of each other. Now, if I wanted to combine these, what I can do is I can select them both. You can either do that by clicking on one and holding down the control key on your keyboard and selecting the other, or you can use your lasso. So if you start in the canvas, hold your click down, and move your mouse, when, you, when the lasso touches both shapes and you let go, they're both selected. And then there's an option up here called Merge Shapes. So when I click on that, now these are seen as one combined shape and they move together. So, um, you know, I just did that gable end, and I did it by using two different shapes. I can actually think of a way to do that 
just off of one shape. So remember, in symbility, there's oftentimes more than one way to do something. So let's see another way I could have achieved the same end product. I'm gonna start with just that standard kind of square rectangle. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get myself set up. Okay, how could I change this into something looking like this other one? I'm gonna make sure I have this shape selected and I'm gonna trigger vertex mode. Remember vertex mode changes all those little square handles to circles? Well, now I have this circular handle that will allow me to manipulate this point and I drag it up and I can make it look like something very similar to this guy over here. So uh, in really just a few clicks, I can achieve the same thing. So again, more than one way to get to the same end point. I'm gonna delete one of those guys. What else can I do here to this 2D exterior? Uh, if I click on it, notice the ribbon changes and it takes me to a tab that says Surface 2D. From here, I see options like add door, add window, add opening, etc. Now, if you've watched the diagramming floor plans module, you've seen these tools before because we can add those elements to our interior diagram. We can also add them here to an exterior. So I can add a doorway, I can add a window, I can move these around and kind of manipulate these elements here as well. So this is everything you'd need to know about really doing a 2D exterior. So this is one way to do an exterior plan. Another way to do an exterior is a 3D exterior. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually delete what I've been working on. And we'll take a look at creating a 3D exterior. And there's actually a few different ways we're gonna look at a 3D exterior. So when we click on auto create, this window pops open and on the left side, we see all of our diagrams. So whatever you had diagrammed over here in your Claim Explorer, that will show up here. So if you've watched our diagramming floor plans module, uh, in that module, I diagrammed a basic floor plan and I did a more advanced complicated floor plan. And we see those both represented in here, floor plan two and floor plan three. If you watched our diagramming roof plan module, you'll see that diagram right in here. And we looked at diagramming roof plans, and then we also looked at snapping a roof plan on top of a floor plan. And that's what this is. This roof plan was designed to go right on top of the floor plan here. So basically, we're gonna look at a few different ways that we can do a 3D exterior plan. We'll look at building a 3D exterior plan from a floor plan and a roof plan, right? So imagine if you were doing a, a complete loss, you diagrammed a first floor, a second floor, a roof plan, you can see how all these elements come together here. But we'll also look at diagramming a, a 3D exterior simply based off of a roof plan. So imagine if there was you know, just, just damage to your roof and exterior, all you do is you diagram a roof plan and then we'll look at how to build a 3D exterior from that. So first let's look at that first scenario where, we're, where we are building a 3D exterior from a floor plan and a roof plan. So what I'll do is I'll place my cursor on the floor plan, I'll hold my click down and I start to move my mouse and you'll see it kind of come with me. And you'll see this orange bar down here. That orange bar is really important. It's telling me if I let go of my click, that's where this diagram will be inserted. So notice the orange bar is flush against the green. The green is representing the grass, so we're really building our house, our 3D exterior, from the ground up. So I'll place my cursor here, that orange bar is flush against the ground, I let go, and I see that 3D um, exterior starting to be built based off of that first floor, okay? Then I'll come in and I'll grab the roof plan. And I wanna share with you the correct way to add this roof plan. I'm actually pushing it down so that the orange bar is flush against the ground. Now you might be thinking, why am I not putting it there? Shouldn't the roof go on top of the first floor? The correct way to account for this is by pushing it so that the roof is flush against the ground. And the reasoning is this. If you haven't watched the diagramming roof plans module, go back and watch that because one of the dimensions that we talk about in that module is the elevation. The elevation from the ground up is accounted for in the roof plan. The roof plan, we set the elevation there. So here in the exterior, that means I drag the exterior roof plan all the way down to the ground. Again, because that distance from the ground up to this eave has already been accounted for as a dimension we set in our roof plan. So when I click done, it's going to generate this 3D exterior plan. So if I come in here, I see that large hand, 
I can start rotating this around. And I see my doors and my windows. All those elements that we're seeing in here, these have been added because of something we did in our floor plan. If I click back on the floor plan here, you'll see all of these doors and windows and everything like that, these were added in our floor plan. And when I create an exterior based off of that, those elements show here. Now, what if there's a window or a door that I forgot? I could click on this 3D exterior and I have a Surface 3D tab up here and I could add a door or window and I can get things lined up as I would like to. Keep in mind though, um, it's bringing elements in from the floor plan. Because I just added a window here, it does not add it back to the floor plan. Okay, so it's not putting it back in the floor plan. It's simply taking what was, a, was there originally, what existed, and bringing it in. Likewise, if I delete a window, it's not going to delete it from this floor plan here. When you're in a 3D exterior, you're kind of in a, a natural state of 3D rotation, okay? So I'm always in this 3D rotated state. So that's one way I could build a 3D exterior. We did it based off of a floor plan and a roof plan. But again, think of a scenario like this. If you're dealing with just damage to a roof and exterior, well then there's no need to diagram an interior floor plan, right? You only diagram where there's damage. So we keep it nice and simple. So here's another way I could build a 3D exterior. Let me go back to the home tab. And the second to last option in there says auto create. So I'm going to go into auto create. And this time I'm, I'm ignoring my floor plans because in the scenario we're dealing with now, we're saying there's only damage to our roof and our exterior. So we simply grab our roof plan. I'll drag it in there. I hit done and it generates that 3D exterior. Now notice I don't see any doors and windows like I did before. And that's because, well, we're not using a, a floor plan. So there are no doors and windows to pull from. So basically what the system does, it takes the roof plan that you dropped in there and it looks at the soffit lines. And from there, it drops a solid wall straight down and that's what's building your 3D exterior. What you could do, however, is now that you've got your 3D exterior and you want to account for some doors and windows, account for some of those subtractions, then you can go in here and you can start adding those elements. Thanks for joining us as we learned how to diagram exteriors. Make sure you check out the next training module where we learn about estimating.